Hello everyone, I'm Landon Shung and today we're doing the periodic table database. It's one of the required projects to earn a certification. And for this project, we're going to create a bash script to get information about chemical elements from a periodic table database. So let's get right into it. And uh, it looks like important after you pass all the project tests, we need to save a dump of our database as well an element.sh file so we can complete step two, which is submitting the solution link, which is going to be our GitHub repo. So let's start this project and run with code ally. All right, let's take a look here. We have an atomic mass that text file and we have instructions. What does this have it? We have it. It has a bunch of data looks like. Okay. And we're starting with a periodic table database that has information about chemical elements and we can connect to it by entering this um, PSQL into the terminal. Seriously, I can't. Oh, I have to like scroll over. See that? Uh, DB name periodic table. So I guess we have the um, database for us. Um, but we have to rename the weight column and rename the melting point column and a bunch of these different tasks. Okay. So actually, it looks like there's a lot of little small tasks. Um, but yeah, I should be able to just get started with this and connect to it. So let's do that. Let's go control back tick and connect to this and we'll just go along. All right. PSQL dash dash username equals free code camp and DB name equals periodic table. Yeah. Equals periodic table. All right. So now I'm connected and let's see what we have in here. So backslash D and we have an elements and properties table. Okay, great. And what do we have to do? We have to part one, fix the database. And then part two, create a Git repo. And then part three, we need to create the script, um, which is element.sh or something. Yeah, I think. And then notes. Okay, and then do the dump. All right, let's do this task. Rename weight to atomic mass. All right, so... Uh, let me see what I have in this elements table quick. We have atomic number, symbol, and name. So it's not in that one. Um, X slash D properties. There we have atomic number, type, and weight. All right, and melting point. All right, so we need to um, rename, alter table properties. Rename uh, alter table properties column or rename column. Rename column is that how it is? I don't know. Rename column. I'm not really sure, but let's try this. Weight two atomic mass. I think I'm doing this wrong. Oh, shoot. That actually worked, I think. <laughs> Oh, darn it. Now it's atomic mad. Shoot. All right, let me change that. Atomic mad. All right. Oh, wait, what? Oh, my bad. I have to change the column. What am I doing? Atomic mad. There we go. Now it's atomic mass. Awesome. And if I run this, it should check and work. Okay, cool. Let's go. First one done. All right. Rename the melting point column. All right. That's also part of this table. So alter table properties. Rename column. And we have to rename the melting point. Melting point Celsius to boiling point. Boiling point Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. And make sure to end that off. Melting point Celsius does not exist. Is that part of my other table? Or I spelled it wrong? No, it's part of my other table. X slash D. Uh, oh gosh, I keep forgetting what the tables are. Elements. Elements has atomic number. No, it's part of this one. X slash D properties has melting point. Not melting point Celsius. Oh, they should accept null values. Oh, melting point to melting point Celsius, I see. 
And I was reading the one above it. Whoops. So melting point to melting point Celsius. All right. To melting point Celsius. Celsius. There we go. Now if I run it. Uh, and boiling point. Whoops. All right. And boiling point. Uh, let's change melting to boiling. Boiling. And melting to boiling. Boiling. All right. Now if I run it, it should be chucked. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Melting point Celsius and boiling point Celsius column should not accept null values. They should not accept null values. All right, so make them not null. How do I add that constraint? Add not null constraint. Constraint Postgres. Alter table of products, alter column product, uh, set not null. Okay, you just add a set not null thing to it. All right, so I'll, uh, let's alter column, or what is it, alter column? Alter column product set not null. All right. Alter properties. Alter column set not null. All right. I can do that. Set not null. There we go. And then we have to do the melting point. Melting point. And now that one should be checked. Yeah, let's go. All right. We have to add the unique constraint to the symbol and name columns from the elements table. Add unique constraint. Unique constraint. Um, all right, alter table, add constraint, constraint name unique. All right. Alter table uh, of the elements table, alter table elements. And then I have to add constraint, add constraint, and then the constraint name, right? So I have to make an S here, constraint. Alter table, table name, add constraint, constraint name unique. All right, constraint name, it will be unique, unique name. Oh, and symbol. All right, symbol, unique symbol. And then I'm guessing we just add it to the symbol like this. That's my guess. Never mind. I don't know what they want. Unique constraints. Find alter table. Constraint unique column one, column two. Add constraint unique. Add constraint unique. Okay. Add constraint name and then unique. Something like that. There we go. And then we need name as well. All right, name. And this will be a unique name. All right. Here we go. Now that one should be checked. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Your symbol and name column should have the not null constraint. All right. So we can do that with set not null. Alter column. Yeah. Alter column. Uh, symbol. Set not null. And then alter column. Name set not null. There we go. So now that one should be checked. Yep, nice. You should set the atomic number column from the properties table as a foreign key. Set the atomic number column as a foreign key that references the column of the same name. All right, let's look up um, add foreign key, foreign key constraint, Postgres to add a foreign key. Uh, let's find the alter statement. Alter, here it is. Alter table orders, add constraint, uh, foreign key, okay. <clears throat> alter table from the properties table, properties. Uh, add constraints, add constraint, FK, okay. Add Constraint, constraint, FK, we need the atomic number as the name in the elements table. Okay, atomic number, atomic 
number to the name. And then foreign key, foreign key. And then we need references. Oh, we need the customer ID. References, customer's ID. Yeah. All right. So we need whatever the properties thing is, which is atomic number, atomic number to reference, references, the table, elements table, um, and the name of the elements table. I believe that is right. Never mind. Cannot be implemented. Key, atomic number, and name are of incompatible types. Um, ch -ch -ch. From the properties as a foreign key that references the column of the same name. Oh, column of the same name. Oh, okay. So this is actually atomic number. Atomic number. Okay. Atomic number. I'll just do FK atomic number. Um, actually, I'll do yeah properties to elements. FK properties elements. There we go. And now, now it should check off. Yeah, 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 awesome. You should create a types table that will store the three types of elements. All right, create table types, types. And now that one should check off. Yep, the types table should have a type ID column that is an integer and the primary key. Alter table types, add column, type ID, which is a serial and primary key. Primary key. All right, let's see if that checks off. It does, awesome. Your types table should have a type column that's a var char and cannot be null. All right, let's add that. Add column type, which is a var char. Um, I'm guessing I'll just I'll just make it big and then not null. Not null. It will store different types from the type column in the properties table. Okay, so let's do that. Let's see if that one checks off. Does. You should add three rows to your types table whose values are the three different types from the properties table. Add three rows to your types table. Three di three different types from the properties table. Select all from properties. Um, are three different types: non-metal, metal, and metalloid. All right. Non-metal, metal, and metalloid. All right. Insert into types values um here we go we need type in there values um metal and then we need non-metal non-metal i think it's like this uh maybe i should check first yeah it is like that okay and then metal void with two l's okay non-metal and then metalloid, metalloid, like that. All right, sounds good. And let's try running that. Awesome. Your properties table should have a type ID foreign key column that references the type ID column from the types table. Should be an int with the not null constraint. All right, we need to add this foreign key constraint. Alter table. Add constraint fk. Um, let's see here. We need to alter the properties table. Has a type ID foreign key. Type ID foreign key. All right. And this is going to the types table properties types. Foreign key is the type ID. It references the types types table and the uh, type ID column of that table. All right, type ID, that should be good. Type ID reference and foreign key constraint does not exist. Uh, your properties table should have a type ID foreign key column. Select all 
from properties. It doesn't have a type ID, it has a type. Do they want me to change that to a type ID? Uh, yes, I'm guessing so. Um, okay, how do we change that without losing any data? Hmm, not really sure. The properties table should have a type ID for and key column. Well, let me copy this. Because we're definitely going to need this later. And let's put this in the text file for now. And then need it to have a type ID column. Oh, I guess I could. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Let me try something. Let's just alter table properties, add column, type ID, and then it's going to have, yeah, alter table properties, add column, type ID, which is going to be not null and an int, int not null, and we'll add the constraint later. Uh, Oh shoot, it already is. Wait, what? Select all from properties. Type atomic mass. It doesn't have a type ID. What the heck? Where's type ID in there? I don't see it. What if I do backslash D properties? Type, no type ID. Yeah. Why is it not letting me? Alter table properties, add column type ID. Int not null. Column type ID contains null values. What? I'm confused. Can I rename that column? Alter table properties. Rename column type to type ID. Okay, that worked. Now if I do backslash D properties, now we have type ID in there, which is a character varying 30. Okay. Um, and now we have to change those to be the correct thing. It references the type ID column from the types table. How do we do that? I know if I do select all from types, maybe I can do it with a join. Metal, non-metal, and metalloid. I have to do an update statement and make it an integer at the same time. What if I do this? I want to do it like asynchronous, asynchronously. So make a type first, add a like a type column. Uh, this is going to be a temp temp type, which is int not null. Why can I not? It says contains null values. Oh, I see. Because obviously it's connected. Okay. I have to make it nullable first. Okay. And it makes more sense now. Whoops. That's because when I create it, I have to add a default because there's already data in there. Okay. 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 Great. So we have a temp type. And then we have to uh, insert the temp type. We have to update it. Update table properties or update properties. No, you know, update. Yeah, properties. Set 
temp type equal to, and then I have to grab the ID. Yeah, all right, temp type equals one where the uh, temp or the type ID since I changed it or the type ID equals metal the did metal first right yeah all right so now if I select all properties there we have non-metal metalloid metalloid metal at the bottom which is one if I select all from types, from types, that lines up with uh, type ID one of metal, and then non metal is number two. All right, so let's do that. Update this one to two, where the type ID is metalloid, or non metal, I mean, non metal, and then update it to three, where it's metalloid. Where it's metalloid. Metal void. There we go. And now I can rename my column again. Or actually, I can, yeah, rename it after I drop my type ID column. You know, so drop, you know, uh, alter table properties, drop column type ID. All right, and then I need to alter table properties, rename column uh, temp type to the new type ID, to type ID. All right, here we go. Now that should be correct. Backslash or select all from properties. And there we go, we have our type ID one, two, and three at the bottom. Okay, cool. Now we need to add this foreign key constraint. So let's grab this line here and type it out because I don't think I'll be able to paste it. Alter table properties, add a constraint, FK properties, types, foreign key, the type ID, References, the types type ID. Uh, shoot, foreign key. I spelled that wrong. I need, right? Do we have to make it not null? We have to make it not null as well, right? Why is this not working? I don't know. Let's make it null, uh, not null for now, I guess. Properties. Um, add constraints, or, or is it alter column? Alter column, uh, type ID, set not null. Yeah, that's good. Now let's try this again. Same thing, foreign key. Uh, it must have, oh, I don't have an S on the constraint. That's why. Okay, S, there we go. Now, this one should check mark. Oh, and the next one. Sweet. All right. Each row should have the type ID value that links to the correct type. Awesome. All right. So those two took quite a while, but uh, we can move on finally. All right. So you should capitalize the first letter of all the symbol values in the elements table. Capitalize the first letter of all the symbol elements, symbol values in the elements table. Select all from elements our symbols need to be uppercase the first letters be careful to only capitalize the letter and not change any others um how do we get it? how do you, how do we do this here i have to grab if it's lowercase is there a hmm, postgres <laughs> Look it up, Postgres. 
um, update values to be capitalized, capitalized. Update all values to uppercase for one column. Upper language, lower upper init cap. Upper function init cap. What does that do? That makes it uppercase. But that makes it. Does that make it correct? Init cap. Um, we often use init cap function to format blog title author name. For example, font statement formats the names of the customer in proper case. Okay, so I think I can use that. Um, although, does that, maybe if I set it, you know, update elements, or update, yeah, elements, set the symbol equal to uppercase. So I have to grab each one. How do I do this? Might be able to do it with the script, but ah, shoot. Select all from elements. How many are there? We just have to do helium, lithium, and botanium. I mean, I guess that's easy enough, right? Um, could just do that. Which one's lithium, helium, botanium? What if I copy this? Can I copy this? Give me this copy. Let's paste it here quick. All right, cool. Give me a little reference. All right, so we have to do this one, this one. Okay, let's try that. So update elements. Set the symbol equal to he where a symbol equals he that's easy enough and then we can set lithium li to li uh, uppercase li and li here and then the motani one is kind of weird that one, do they still want to capitalize? Only capitalize the letter and not change any others of all the symbol. Okay. And motanium. Okay. So do MT, MT, where it's MT. There we go. And if I run this, should that one check? Okay, cool. Uh, all right, let's move on. You should remove all the trailing zeros after the decimals from each row of the top mass column. You may need to adjust a data type to decimal for this. Final values, they should be are in the atomic mass.txt file. All right, so we have to change the atomic mass to be a three. What? Um, all the trailing zeros. I see there's trailing zeros. Select all from elements uh not elements properties wait no which one is it from the atomic mass from properties i guess properties yeah atomic mass has a bunch of trailing zeros mm -hmm. i see so we have to remove all the all the trailing zeros i think we're supposed to use a script for this stuff <laughs> Um, wait, no, you should create an element.sh file in your repo folder for the program I want you to make. Okay, never mind. That's coming later. That is coming later. Uh, how do we remove the trailing zeros? I guess we can adjust the data type decimal to be four long. Um, Postgres, truncate, trailing zeros. 
how to remove trailing zeros from a decimal. Let's see here. With real. Um, with real. Truncate with. With update statement. With update. Type numeric. Trim. There's a trim thing. Trim trailing, maybe? No. From column text. Oh, man. Why is this stuff so complicated? Numeric data type. Ah, oh, man, I can't find anything. All right, let's do what they say we should. We should first adjust the data type to decimal. All right, so backslash D will raise first just to see what it is for now. Right now it's numeric, 9.6. We need to alter table properties. Uh, alter column. Alter column. Atomic mass set to decimal, decimal, final, okay, set to decimal, does that work? No. Set to decimal, was it like 6.9? Let's try that. Never mind. Set to decimal, set to, no. Change Postgres data type. Change Postgres column type. Yeah, column type. Change column type. Alter table column. Set data type. All right. Let's copy that quick. Go back here. Use it as reference. All right. Alter table. Properties, alter column, the atomic mass, um, set data, type, new data type. The new data type is going to be decimal, decimal, six, nine, I don't know. That did not work. Oh, this one is, wait, set data. I don't get it, set data. Numeric scale nine must be between zero and precision six. I don't know, man. Take off the three and then just do that. Now is it, uh, I don't know. Select all from properties, now they're these again. Darn it. That did not work at all. Can I do decimal without anything? Yes, I can. Ooh. That's probably the way to do it. You just make a decimal without the 6-4. Yeah. And then I update this. And then I select. And now it should be right, right? 10.81. Oh, screw you! Screw you! Ah, so now I have to change all these one by one. Yeah, what am I doing, man? That is annoying. All right, well, updates number one, I guess, which is one point oh oh eight. Number nine did not update. That's weird. Select all properties. Oh, there is no nine. Shoot, I don't know if that's the right atomic number. Well, either way, I guess it has to get inserted. Insert into which one is this? Um, properties. Properties. 
we need. Although I don't know what the other melting point points are. So that might be a problem. Let's see if this runs correctly. It does. Okay. Let's just do that. Oh, we have to add fluorine. I see. Topic number nine. Uh huh. Uh, properties. We need symbol. I know. Atomic number, right? Its name is fluorine. Symbol is F. It's non-metal. Atomic number nine. Okay. Atomic number nine. Atomic number. We have to add the atomic mass. Atomic mass. We have to add melting point Celsius. Boiling point Celsius. Melting point Celsius. Celsius. Boiling point Celsius. We have to add the type ID. All right, so we have to add all this stuff. Values are the atomic number is nine. The atomic mass is 18.98. And then we have the melting point of negative 220, boiling point of negative 188.1, 88.1. We have a non-metal, which is, I believe, number two for type ID. All right, insert that. Violates foreign key constraint. Nine is not present in table elements. Oh, darn. I have to insert into elements first. Insert into elements. Um, name, or is it, no, what is it? Gosh darn it. X slash D elements. We have symbol and name and atomic number. Symbol, name, atomic number. Insert into elements. Symbol, name, atomic number. Values, we have our symbol, which is F. We have our name, which is fluorine. And we have our atomic number, which is 9. All right, and now we can do this one right here. There we go. That inserted correctly. Now we should run this. And it's not checked. Gosh darn it, why is it not checked? I spelled fluorine wrong, that's why. Ah, shoot. Uh, update elements. Set name equal to fluorine. Where name equals fluorine. There we go. Now if I run it. God darn it. Fluorine. I still spelt it wrong. Why do I keep spelling it wrong? I don't know. Uh, U O. It's U O, not O U. Now let's try it. What? Fluorine. Hmm. It's a non metal. Select all from types. Non metal is number two. Yeah, that's right. Select all from elements. We have number nine in there. Yeah, F fluorine. Select all from properties. We have number 9, 18.988, negative 188.1, negative 222. Oh, what the fudge, man. It's a non metal. Why is that one not checked? You should add the element with atomic number 10 to your database. Oh, okay. 
and that one is neon. It is 20.18. Oh, and this is wrong though. So I should delete the dog number 1000. Mm -hmm. Probably not, huh? Um, I don't know. Let's just insert this. Insert into elements. We need neon, which is N E. Neon. And it is number 10. Insert into properties. We need the atomic number. Just 10. We have 20.18. 20.18. We have negative 248.6. 248.6 and negative 246.1. No, okay. 246.1. And it's a non metal again. All right. Insert. Let's try running this now. Okay, that one worked, just not fluorine. I wonder why fluorine didn't work. That's really annoying. That is really annoying. Darn. All right, create a uh, periodic table folder in the project folder. So we can do that by adding a uh, file here. Create a periodic table folder. So make dir periodic table. All right. And then turn it into a get repo with git init. So we first have a CD into it, periodic table. And then we can do git init. There we go. Now that one should check mark. Great. Your repository should have a main branch with all your commits. All right. Git checkout main. I guess we have to do dash b main, all right. Um, it doesn't have a main branch because we didn't do a commit. Your periodic table repo should have at least five commits. You should create an element.sh file in your repo folder for the program I want you to make. All right, so let's do that. Touch element.sh. There we go. We added that file in here. There it is. Nothing in it for now. And then we have to add some commits to it. I'll just add this for now. Git commit dash m add element sh. And then if I run this, okay, cool. That's good. It needs at least five commits, but that will come later. It should have executable permissions. All right, so shimod plus x on our element.sh file. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, if you run element.sh, it should output only. Please provide an element of an argument and finish running. Okay, echo, I guess. Echo. And then paste this in here. Run. Google. If you run element sh1, element shh, or element sh hydrogen, it should output only um, these things. Um, but for now, let's add this and commit it. Um, the commit message will be um, add prompt. Okay, if you run element sh1, h, or hydrogen, it should output only. The element with atomic number one is hydrogen. It's a non-metal with a mass of this. Hydrogen has a melting point and a boiling point. All right. If you run element.sh script with another element as input, you get the same output, but with information associated with that given elements. If the argument input to your element.sh script doesn't exist, uh, the only output should be, I could not find that element in the database. The message for the first commit in your repo should be initial commit. Gosh darn it. Seriously. The rest of your commit messages should start with fix, feature, refactor, chore, or test. You should delete the non-existent element whose atomic number is a thousand from the two tables. 
All right, delete from elements. Um, where the atomic number, atomic number equals a thousand. Oh, shoot. That should be in PSQL. Delete from elements where atomic number equals a thousand. It's still reference from properties, so we have to do properties first. Properties. And then do the elements. Elements. There we go. So now if I run that, that should check. Okay, cool. And then you should finish your project file on the main branch. Okay. Uh, so the, my first commit should be initial commit. Thankfully, I can change that with uh, git rebase. So I'll do that. Um, not in this one. I have to go to this bash thing. Uh, git rebase dash i. And we'll go ahead till day two. Invalid upstream head till day one. All right. Instead of add prompt, I need to change the commit message. How do I change the commit message? Well, R for reword. Okay. R. Um, and then I have to do control X. Yeah. Yes. And enter. And I can change this to be initial commit. Initial commit. Um, lowercase commit. Here we go. Control X. Yes. Enter. Here we go. Now, if I run this, are you kidding me? Um, git log dash dash one line. Add element dot sh. Oh darn it! I guess I can use the SHA of the commits. So maybe that'll work. So if I just copy this or theory base I and I go six eight seven db d d eight, then I can do it. Oh never mind. It just goes the one before it. Darn it! I guess I can reset. So control X, get reset, add delete one. All right, now we have that change. Git status, git log. We have our one add elements. Commit dash dash amend. Oh, I see, yeah, I could do that. Sweet. All right, let me just do git commit dash dash amend. And now I can change this to initial commit. Great. All right, initial, initial commits, control X, yes, enter. Here we go, now if I run it, oh, great, all right. Um, get commit, get at all, or get status, what do I have here, modify, yeah. Git add all, git commits, dash m. I modified element.sh, I added a prompt, add prompt. Okay, and it should have started with fix or feature, shoot. Oh, I git commit, dash dash amend. All right, we have to start it off with um, feature, add prompt, there we go. Control X, yes, enter, okay, cool. All right. Hey, now that one is checked off. Cool. All right. So, which ones do I have left? These things. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of tough. <laughs> okay. And then this one. Um, I'm periodic table should have at least five commits, and then this uh, fluorine one, which is really annoying me. It's really, uh, really annoying. Um, select all from elements. We have fluorine in here, right? Yeah, F-L-U-O-R-I-N-E. 
yeah, that looks right to me. Symbol's F, it's 9. Mass is 18.998. Non-middle. I'm not really sure why that one is not passing. Hmm. Select all from properties. Atomic number 9. Melting point, negative 220. 188.1. Oh, 18.998. Oh my gosh. Holy crap. Whew. Update properties. Set the mass or the atomic mass. Atomic mass. Atomic weight. Or is it? Oh gosh. What is it? Gosh darn it. I already forgot. Select all from properties, it is the atomic mass, okay. Updates. Properties. Set atomic mass equal to 18.998, where the atomic number, atomic number equals nine. All right, now that one should pass. Yippee! All right, let's fucking go. All right, we need to do this stuff. We need to take an input. The input is a dollar sign one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dollar sign one is the input. And this dollar sign one is going to be equal to our symbol. Symbol. And then we have to check if it's a letter. If it's a letter, the full thing, or if it's a number. If it's the full thing, so if it's like two letters or less, I suppose. Yeah. So I have a length of two or less, or if it's a number. So how do we check if it's a number? Yeah. Let me see here. All right, we can check if the symbol's not a number with this thing. Cool. QQ. If symbol is not a number, then we have to check, or we can do an else in here, else we do some other stuff, if then else, then parts, I guess we have to check if it is a, if input is two letters long or greater than two letters, or if it's two letters or less, two letters or less, if input is two letters or less, if input is greater than two letters. Two letters, all right. If symbol length, how do I check the length? Check um, string length in bash. Expert. Among them, length gives you the length of the string. String length and bash, here we go. Expert length, my string. Expert length. Length of my string is nine. All right, here we go. This is great. Let's grab that. And if it's greater than this, um, expert length symbol. Is um, greater than 
2 greater than or equal to 2. Then we can do some other stuff. Then else and fi. All right. So inside the then block. So in this one, we know that it's greater than two letters. So we have to get data by full name. This one, we have to get data by symbol. Get data by atomic symbol symbol and then this one we have to get number or get data by the atomic number atomic number all right cool all right, so we can use something to query where is it this right here um i'm going to do it you can create a PSQL variable for querying databases like this. I don't believe you. I'm going to do it my way, which is this way. Right here. Paste that in. We have to do username for code camp. DB name is uh, periodic table. Periodic table. Tuples only C. Okay, and then we can start querying. So we have to go um, data equals dollar sign dollar sign PSQL quotes and then I'll if I think all right select all from my um, Babu elements I guess where the name equals the symbol, block sign symbol. All right, and then if we don't get any data, basically, if no data, then we have to echo that we couldn't find it. Yeah. So we can do an if dash z no data. We have to do it then, and an fi. Then we have to echo, and then otherwise we did find it. So this is display data, display data. We have to echo this thing down here, where is it? I could not find that element in the database. Copy that. Paste it here. Okay, and then I guess we can copy this down times just in these different spots. Get data by atomic symbol. Um, I guess I could turn this into a function actually this part right here this if block if no data yeah so let's do that let's take this and create a function um no data and then let's paste this in here and this is going to be dollar sign one uh, display data though, probably not. Um, I guess we could display data though. And that could be like dollar sign two, three, and four. Yeah. Let's do that. Display data, we need dollar sign two, dollar sign three, dollar sign four, stuff like that. That will come from the argument that gets passed in. So right here, we have to do no data. Um, or actually, display data would make more sense. Display. Display data. And then we pass on the data, dollar sign data. Although, 
the data might be looking weird. We'll see though. We'll see. I'll just echo dollar sign one here. See what it is. The data by atomic symbol. Copy this, paste here. The atomic symbol is going to be get all from elements where or properties. Is it properties? Select all from properties. Um, there's the atomic number. Select all from elements is the symbol. Okay. All right. So symbol is going to be symbol from there. And then the atomic number is going to be from properties or even from elements, right? Elements also has it. Yeah. Atomic number. Okay. We can also do it from there. All right. So let's copy that down here. Paste that in. Um, what did I do? Control Shift Z. Data. We have where the atomic number, atomic number equals symbol. All right. So now, if I try this out, dot slash element dot sh, and I pass in h, what do I get? Syntax error and conditional. Darn it. Why doesn't that work? Expression length symbol doesn't work for some reason because this has to be single quotes, I think. Right? No. Single quotes? No. Definitely not. It's probably a string, that's why. Now, uh, word count dash m gives a character count for, um, I see. Do I have to, length is this dash n, I can do that, maybe. Let's try that quick. It'll probably be the same thing, but. Echo dash n, my string is dollar sign symbol. And then that, okay, let's actually see what this passes, what this creates. Dash n of a, and then wc dash m, what does that give me? Three. Um, what if I put it inside braces like this? Do I need, have to do a sub subshell or no? A word wc dash m is greater than or equal to two. Okay, that gives me a syntax error. What if I put this in a subshell with this and a dollar sign? And it still gives me a syntax error. Um, if I do three greater than or equal to two, oh, that also gives me a syntax error. Darn. Um, is that because I have to do parentheses? Or no? Echo this three greater than or equal to two. Oh, shoot, I forgot how to do conditionals, apparently. Hmm. Compare numbers in bash. Dash GT, then. Oh yeah, dash gt greater than. Uh, so I should do dash gt here. If it's greater than two, 
I mean, I don't think that'll work either, but maybe if I do this, um, length equals, and I give it the subshell, and I just pass length in here, dollar sign length, maybe that'll work. Let's try this. Okay, cool. That that did work. I just need to make sure to put the quotes around the symbol. And then the atomic number and stays that. Okay. Let's try it again. Please provide an element of an argument. Display data command not found. Okay, so display data. I have to put this on top. Let's throw this up here. Symbol is dollar sign one, yeah. Paste that. Now let's try again. H one, I get one. Yeah, I got one for my this thing, I guess. Oh shoot, because it's dollar sign one, isn't it? Oh, uh, so it would be dollar sign two then? Is that really it? Let's try. Please provide an element as an argument type. Okay. Am I getting somewhere? I'm not really sure. Let's try echoing the data here. Echo dollar sign data. Get data by full name, get data by atomic symbol, echo dollar sign data. Try that. Okay, there we go, 1H hydrogen. So this display data thing is not really working out so hot. Darn it. I thought I might be able to do that, but apparently not. Let's just get rid of that then. And we can just copy and paste, whatever. Echo data is going to be 1H hydrogen. But I want to grab all the data that I need all at once. So to do that, I'm going to do some joins. I'm going to do my inner joins. All right. So we have to grab everything. It's a non-metal, yeah, mass, hydrogen, yeah. So we do have to grab pretty much everything. So how are we going to do this? We're going to do a join. Um, inner join. It has to come before the where clause from elements. Inner join on the properties um, using, and let's use the atomic number, atomic number, right? Yeah. And then we have to do another inner join, inner join this time on the um, bu -bu 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 types using the type ID, type ID. Okay, let's try that. H, here we go, we get a bunch of data now. Two, one, H, hydrogen, one, okay. Cool. Now, how do we make this so that it's usable? <laughs> That's the question. Can I do it with a hat thing? I think I can. I think I can. It's bad boy here. You done. If I do it like this, <laughs> use that. And then I do data here. And then I can just, you know, grab what I need. Shift tab. What do I need to read? Um, what do I need even? Do I even need that two in there? Probably not. Yeah, so I can 
Let's skip that part. Oh, that's the non-metal. That's the type ID, I see. So let's just grab the atomic number. We need the um, name. We need the symbol. Actually, let's do symbol first. Symbol, the name. We need the atomic weight. Atomic weight. Actually, you know what? Let's just do all. Screw it. I'm not screwing around with this. Um, and let's just do uh, bar, 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 <laughs> uh, bar, bar, symbol, bar, name, bar, weight, bar, um, melting, bar, boiling, bar, metal, or type. There we go. And then I can just echo this whole string here. Let's copy this. Throw it in here. And then just replace the parts that I need to replace. Okay. So the, the element with atomic number one, and that is going to be not symbol, bar bar symbol. No, this is going to be number and bar. Okay. So we have to do dollar sign number is hydrogen, which is dollar sign um, name, and then H is dollar sign symbol. It's a non-metal, so dollar sign type with a mass of 1.08, dollar sign weight, and dollar sign name again. It has a melting point of this, so dollar sign melting, and boiling point of this, which is boiling, dollar sign boiling. Okay, that looks pretty beautiful to me. And let's try Getting rid of that. And let's actually do this now. H. Oh, yeah. That looks right to me. Heck yeah, man. Let's go. Let's copy this and put it everywhere else. Okay. <laughs> feel pretty good about this. All right. Put it there. Oh, although... Oh, I have to do this inner join, too. Shoot. Um... Yeah, let's copy everything then and do these inner joins. Except we just have to change the where clause on these. The where, um, this is full name, where name equals symbol. And then this one is where the atomic number, atomic number equals the symbol without quotes. All right, so now let's do elements of one. That's hydrogen, okay, and then if I do hydrogen. Oh, same thing, let's, let's go, holy. All right, so now if I run this. Ah, oh, shoot. Doesn't like it for some reason. It should only output and finish running. Why doesn't it like it? Come on, man. If you run it with a... Okay, if I don't have an input that's right... Oh, then it still outputs that. I see. I need uh, the else statements on these. Okay, so if no data... Ah, shoot, I need to make sure if there's no data, I have to do something else. I was going to do that with this, but this doesn't work at all. Echo. Let's take that. Throw it down here. And let's take this if statement and put it right up here. Paste 
and then go fi or then fi let's bring this down let's shift all this over tab it over okay yeah so if it's that then we do this otherwise or if there's no data okay so then this is in the else block and then the if is this echo statement here there we go so now i can just copy this part and change it for these yeah that should work i don't see why not um oh i have to change this to data as well okay now i can do it copy that and just change the echo data parts here paste and paste that looks pretty good to me be able to shift tab over okay now let's try it oh shoot unexpected token then if then if no data then if no data then hmm shoot it's like too many thens oh i have to that's why get rid of that now i think it should work yeah i could not find the element in the database great okay so now if i run this seriously seriously oh that was amazing oh um the argument input doesn't have an atomic number symbol or name in the database the only output should be okay yeah i know i also needed to add a bunch of commits which i did not do um i usually just do one commit anyways which is not really the greatest thing to do but whatever let's see here what can i like zoom it out get data by full name and this stuff no, i'll just i'll first do this one or i'll get at all get commits dash m um skeleton or feature add skeleton and i can do uncomment this i can do get at all get commits except feature it's going to be um, get data by full name get data by full name and then i can do uncomment this do another get at all do a commit get data by atomic symbol atomic symbol and then i can uncomment this part and do the same thing get at all get commits get data by atomic number there we go so now if i do get log get log dash dash one line there i have five commits right so after i run okay that one works these ones don't work for some reason i don't know why i don't know why if i do number three and then it says lithium right and that's correct right if i do four it gives me the right one beryllium if i do be it gives me beryllium if i do beryllium that also gives me beryllium i don't know why they don't like this element.sh should only should output only provide please provide an element as an argument and finish running please provide an element as an argument and then it finishes running with this um it should output only oh if you run it with 
an element with it, then it should only output that. I see. Okay, so that's probably the problem. Um, I have to check like if I don't have a symbol. If no symbol, then it should only output that. Ah, if it's not a number. Ah, darn. Um, so then I have to wrap everything in this. That's annoying. If dash z dollar sign one, then and only then we have to say this. Please provide arguments. Otherwise, else we can keep going and then just throw everything in there. So let's just grab all this, control X, and paste it in here. And I should make sure that that is correctly tabbed over, which it's not really, especially down here. Why is it not formatted right? I don't know. Paste. So this stuff, okay, tab that over. Great, now it's nice and beautiful. Now if I run it. Oh, it all works except for this one. Uh, Okay, what is this last one? You should finish your project while on the main branch. Your working tree should be clean and you should not have any... Oh, yeah, I have to make, have this commit. All right, last thing to do, get at all. Get commit-m feature fix. Um, only output needed lines all right there we go so now if i run it tutorial complete let's go that only took forever oh man some of that was really annoying to do but we finally got it complete and then we have to do this last thing here which is a dump all right yeah so let's do this quick all right, pg dump dash cc dash dash inserts dash u free code camp periodic table greater than periodic table dot sql. Hopefully this works. Okay. And I added it into my periodic table part of it. And then what do I have to do now? Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to do. And then I have to add this stuff to my yeah, repo in a public repo. Save it to file as a, that in a public repo and submit it to free code camp. All right. All right. So let's do that. Let's get rid of all these things here. We don't need them and go to GitHub and we're going to add a repo. New, I have to enable two-factor auth, apparently. Uh, repo name is going to be uh, periodic table database, periodic, or FCC first, FCC, periodic table DB, public. Let's create this. And let's add a file, because I don't think I can connect to it with Git on the VM. So... I mean, I can try it, but I don't think it'll work. And I would do that with this get, get remote at origin part of it. And I can't even copy this if I wanted to. Or actually, can I? Yeah, actually, I think I can maybe. Paste. No, actually, I can't. So yeah, I'm just going to add a new file. Create a new file. This is going to be element.sh elements.sh 
and then we'll grab everything from there. Control A, Control Copy, Control V, and then we can say create element.sh, commit that. Then we can add another file, create new file. Let's copy everything in here. Control A, Control Copy, Control V. Let's create uh, actually what files is called. Um, it's going to be called periodic table.sql. Periodic table.sql. And then create SQL file. Let's commit that directly to main. There we go. Now we can grab this repo, copy it, and paste it inside of Free Code Camp. All right, go to Free Code Camp, relational database search, and it's right. Oh man, we're almost done with this stuff. The last thing we have is a number guessing game. All right, let's paste this here and say we've completed it. Complete the project first. Um, I thought we did. I have to do continue. There we go. Now I can do it. Right? Come on, refresh. Paste. Yeah, there we go. Completed it. Let's go. Completed that next project. Submit and go to the next challenge, which is going to be the number guessing game. And so if you're looking forward to that, stay tuned. And if you like the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I read all the comments. If you have any questions, hopefully I can uh, help you out. And I will see you later. Peace out. Bye.